it's just astonishing to me that so much was ignored so often and you come to the conclusion there is no there there. So what do we know? We know that no defensive briefing was given to President Trump about concerns regarding his campaign, but when there were concerns regarding the Clinton campaign and foreign influence, she was briefed. We know that Senator Feinstein was briefed when the FBI thought maybe a member of her staff was connected to the Chinese intelligence community. All of these investigations of the Trump campaign were counterintelligence investigation, investigations. Not one mention to President Trump, you may have a problem with Papadopoulos. Well, if you look at the transcripts of the, of the, the, uh, the bar talk with Mr. Papadopoulos, he says in the transcripts, he didn't even know he was being recorded, that no, he's not working with the Russians. He hasn't received any information from Russia. That would be treason. That would be a crime. The whole premise of Crossfire Hurricane was a report by an uh, Australian ambassador to the United Kingdom that was given to somebody in our office in London. That makes its way back to Washington. They've got all this information where Papadopoulos denies working with the Russians, and they just plow ahead. Compare that to the September CIA memo to the FBI suggesting that Hillary Clinton has signed off on a plan to link Trump to Russia to draw attention away from her e email server problem. This is our CIA telling the FBI they have credible information and investigative lead that Hillary Clinton, the Democratic nominee, is trying to link Trump to Russia for political purposes, and the FBI completely ignored it, apparently threw it in the garbage can, and considered a Australian ambassador meeting in a bar more reliable, didn't give it one minute of attention. And the reason that's important, it begins to explain how this all happened. Christopher Steele was on the payroll of Fusion GPS, who was on the payroll of the Democratic Party. Christopher Steele was working for the Democratic Party. He provided a dossier that used a Russian source who was suspected of being a Russian agent years before, and it turned out to be a bunch of garbage. So the reason the FBI should have looked at what the CIA had told them is it begins to make Crossfire Hurricane make more sense, that this whole thing was cooked up in July, that the whole idea of Trump-Russia connections were not real. They were manufactured in part by Christopher Steele, and the FBI bought it hook, line, and sinker. So I think a lot of us on our side are just astonished that when the CIA sends over information to the FBI that they have intelligence that Hillary Clinton signed off on a plan to connect Trump to Russia to divert attention from her, that nobody at the FBI did a damn thing about it. Well, who did they send it to? Peter Strzok. Are you going to have me believe that Peter Strzok was fair-minded when it came to Trump-Clinton? Doesn't it make a lot of sense that the person who hated Trump thought he should lose $100 million to nothing, thought he was an idiot, totally invested in making sure he never becomes president, is it very far-fetched to say that when he got the information about Clinton, he just purposely did nothing with it? How do you explain a system this out of control? The most high-profile case maybe in the history of the FBI, at least near the top, that when the subsource is interviewed on two separate occasions and the information is damning to the dossier, it's sculptory in nature. It never makes its way up to anybody who actually signed the warrant. What kind of oversight existed for this to happen? How serious were there about checks and balances? Why didn't they go to Trump and do for Trump what they did for Clinton? We think you may have a problem. You need to correct it. It's pretty obvious to us that Crossfire Hurricane started basically with a conversation in a bar, it took on a life well beyond what the evidence would require, that every time it was supposed to come to end, it kept going. Every time they received some information that made the whole premise of the case uh, unreliable, they ignored it. When it comes to General Flynn in January the 4th, the professionals wanted to close out the case against General Flynn because there was no there there. It was the seventh floor that kept it going. They tricked General Flynn into talking without a lawyer, without going to the White House. 
Um, Sally Yates said they should have de defensively briefed the president if they had a concern with General Flynn. They chose not to. They set him up and acted very dishonorably toward General Flynn. And there's nothing wrong with General Flynn talking to the ambassador of the Russia when he's the incoming national security advisor. And the conversations are recorded, and there's not one word in there to suggest that General Flynn had been an agent of the Russians at any time. And they've basically tried to ruin the man's reputation. The professionals January the 4th took a hard look at General Flynn and found nothing there. It's just these people at the top who had an insane desire to keep looking at Trump people when the evidence would suggest they needed to stop. Why did they never stop when it came to Trump? when they should have stopped? Why did they never slow down? Because they had a bias. They really were in the tank when it came to, to Trump being a Russian agent. No matter what the evidence said, they were going after this guy because in their mind, he wasn't worthy. Why did they not look at the allegations against uh, candidate Clinton provided by the CIA? It would undercut the narrative. This wasn't an investigation that was unbiased. This was an investigation that was out of control. The people in charge of it were deeply biased. Their actions proved more than any, more than any direct evidence of their bias. Every time they had a moment to reflect, they, mu they moved forward. Every time exculpatory information was provided, they ignored it or altered it criminally. It's no accident to the American, it's no accident in my view that all this happened. This is not a series of random mistakes. This was a concerted effort to keep an investigation going that should have stopped, that should have slowed down. And what's the damage done? They manipulated the FISA court to keep a warrant process going that should have stopped months ago. They created a cloud over the FBI about political bias that lingers to this day. Lawyers are being prosecuted for manipulating evidence to keep a warrant application alive. They were told about information from the CIA that maybe this was all part of a political scheme of the opponent. They ignored it. They knew that the Christopher Steele dossier was suspect. They knew that the source was a prior Russian, suspected Russian agent, and they kept going and going and going. And they never at one moment gave President Trump a briefing that every other candidate should expect. If you think somebody in my office is doing something wrong, I would like for you to tell me so I can fix it. They weren't trying to protect Trump. They weren't trying to protect his campaign from foreign influence. They were trying to undercut the president. They were trying to keep an investigation going against a president, a candidate they despised. They had one standard for Trump, vastly different than that of candidate Clinton. And my Democratic colleagues say, let's move on. To this day, years later, I've yet to find one person who will take responsibility for manipulating the FISA court. I didn't know. If I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have signed it. So who are we to blame? Is it somebody at the bottom of the pyramid who had all this sculptory information and for some reason didn't share it? Is that what the system's come down to? Blaming somebody at the bottom? They take responsibility in name only. They don't seem to appreciate the gravity of damage done to the FBI and to the investigative process. When they say, no, of course I wouldn't have signed that warrant. These are the people, Comey and McCabe, not Rosenstein and Yates, who are actually in charge of gathering the information. They're in charge of the investigative part of uh, obtaining a FISA warrant. They gather the facts and the lawyers at DOJ decide whether or not to pursue a warrant. The people in charge of this investigation were notified by the CIA that this may have been a plot cooked up by the Democratic candidate to blame Trump for being involved in Russia when he wasn't. They completely ignored it. And when they were uh, hit hard by the facts that the dossier was a bunch of garbage. It just magically never made it up to their desk. Everything bad about Trump made it to their desk. Everything that's sculptory about the Trump campaign never made it to their desk. 
How dumb do they think we are? This committee is not through. We're going to keep digging until we find out how the most high-profile investigation of a candidate for president of the United States and eventually a sitting president was handled so poorly and try to let the FISA court know that we take our job seriously. So we will continue this process. People need to be fired. And I think the criminality here um, needs to be looked at. I find it very difficult to believe that this exculpatory information was not withheld from the court on purpose. We know Klein Smith changed its sculptory information. We caught him. There's somebody else out there that probably knows. The system uh, rejected the sculptory information. They just didn't ignore it. To be continued. Thank you. Hearing is adjourned.